The violence continues out on the streets, even though the G20 summit has ended, and we are expecting momentarily on the left-hand side of your screen, President Obama is going to be speaking uh, before the cameras and microphones. Uh, we're told that this may last uh, anywhere from 15 to, to 20 minutes. We do have uh, the president's remarks, but they are embargoed until he delivers them himself, so we will not be reading them, but we should be hearing from the president momentarily. But, Greg, what could be much more interesting than those comments could be the questions and the answers that the president gives. As you know, very rarely does he take questions. Our Peter Barnes is there from the Fox Business Network, as are other journalists who will ask him about exactly what was accomplished. He had big goals going into the G8 and the G20, and we will know moments away how he thinks it went, the president, that is, and then the reporters will ask their questions. I have a few questions for Richard Sakharides, who's a Democratic strategist, and he's joining us now. Richard, thanks for being with us. Hi. There, there were a lot of topics to talk to you about today, but as we await this speech, I really want to know what is on the line for the president here. Well, you guys, I mean, I was listening in to your, uh, the two of you talk a little while ago. I mean, you, you both are very negative on this summit. I mean, I think that uh, these things, you know, really when, even when nothing major is accomplished, these are an important opportunity for leaders to get together, to build these relationships, and to move forward on a broad range of issues. There was a lot of good progress made on Afghanistan. There was a very important meeting with, uh, with Mr. Cameron from, uh, from, uh, from England. Uh, that was the, you know, the first of its kind since he took over. So I think you know, we'll, we're about to hear from the president himself what he thought was accomplished. But uh, these are important meetings, and we're lucky, we're lucky we get to have them. Yeah. Well, Richard, honestly, I think we described the issues that are at hand. I don't think that I and don't recall expressing uh, negativity as to the results, we don't know. We're waiting to hear from the president. We have to hear what he says and talk to you and others about it. In the meantime, though, the president went into this with a, a mind for spending, and, and that wasn't met by all of the members of, of certainly the G8 and G20, with, with them believing that that's what's best for them. Do you think when we hear him speak moments from now, he will have changed his mind, maybe leaning more towards some cuts and less spending? Well, I don't think he will have changed his mind. I think what you'll see is that coming out of this meeting, you're right, that the president did going in, uh, came in with a message more focused on deficit reduction than, than some of these other leaders. But, you know, each country is having their own problems. I think everybody's been spooked by what we saw happening in Greece. And uh, so coming out of this, there's perhaps more an emphasis on, emphasis on deficit reduction than we would like. But I think each country will have to calibrate it individually for themselves. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll come to some kind of an agreement globally how to keep the global recovery going. Uh, joining us on the other side, Justin Safey uh, now joins us. He's a GOP strategist. And Justin, um, what about that? The president went into this uh, hoping to convince uh, G20 nations to spend more. Instead, they decided to do the opposite, spend less, austerity, spending cuts. Um, a defeat for the president is his influence at these meetings diminished, and I better uh, hold, hold that question for you. Here is the president. 